there they go. <gasps> Let's move on, Mike. Uh, the final leg of Saturday's All Stakes, All Dirt, pick five at Churchill Downs, race 12. We've only been building towards this for the last six months. It's the grade one Kentucky Derby. $3 million on the line. Field of 20 three-year-olds going a mile and a quarter. Eternal glory on the line, as well as a lifetime ticket to boink as many mares as you would like to do. Zandon is your three to one favorite at post 10 for Chad Brown. Epicenter, seven to two. We're both against Zandon here. Where are you going on top to win the 2022 Kentucky Derby? Sign me up for some Messier. Um, look, I, I feel like Messier is, is, is sitting on a monster effort here. There's a bunch of different reasons why I like Messier. I think race shape actually fits pretty well for Messier. When you look at this field, how it's going to break, there's two horses that are logically going to be the speed. It's the four summers tomorrow. It's the 17 classic causeway. Um, I don't fully trust the four is going to be able to get out of the gate as cleanly as everyone expects. These international horses have struggled with it. The four summers tomorrow has come out of sprint races uh, overseas. So you could see some sprint style speed for summers tomorrow, but classic causeway from the 17. Like, are we sure? Like everyone's like, it's a lock. The horse is going to break out there. Yeah. He broken well. So like, but let's at least bring up the fact that someone last year didn't break so well out of the 15 post. And like, mm-hmm. yes, Joel was ours. Our feet weren't in the irons, all that jazz. I'm not going to say it's a foregone conclusion that, you know, if you go out to the outside and you look who's around uh, Classic Causeway, you've got Cyberknife, who's right inside, who is going to be more forwardly placed. you got White Abari, who the ownership group said they're going to go out there. Simplification from the 13 has some speed. Classic Causeway might struggle clearing this field. And if that happens, it sets up for Messier to get a dream freaking trip and be able to sit right in second or even have the lead around the first turn. If that happens, Messi is wildly dangerous from the front. Let's say that doesn't happen. Let's say Classic Causeway breaks, makes the lead, four summers tomorrow, goes out. Guess who's sitting right behind him? Messier. Guess who gets first run on two shit speeds? Messier. Guess what doesn't happen down the lane all that often? People passing the horse in front. It sets up well for Messier because of the gate draw and where the rest of the speed is. Epicenter to me is the other wild card coming out of that, that three post. Joel has to get that horse forwardly placed. He has to be on Summer is Tomorrow's tail if Summer's Tomorrow goes. And if Summer's Tomorrow doesn't go, he's got to be on Messier's tail. The problem is, I don't think he beats Messier if he's on Messier's tail. And that's why I can't use someone like Epicenter. So I'm going to put Messier on top because of the draw and because of how the early pace, I think, is going to materialize in this race. Uh, for the third year in a row, you're thinking it is a John Velasquez piloted Bob Baff. Uh, Tim Yakteen goes across the wire first. Very well could happen. It, and I'm not using Messier, but uh, if I went three deep, this would be the horse that I use. For all the re- you just don't know with him, but my concern with him, and ultimately why I left him off, Mike, Messier in the past, when he gets that nice, easy lead, like the Robert B. Lewis stakes, he looks great. Uh, his maiden win, uh, when he, he didn't take the lead early, but or right away, but he got it halfway down the back stretch. Wins going away. Uh, the Bob Hope stakes uh, didn't break the best. Plavin Pratt pulls him back. Wins going away. But then once we start going two turns, he gets challenged by Slow Down Andy. Gets passed. Yeah. We go to the Sandy to Derby. Taba, a horse who's made one freaking start at one turn and is the lesser backed of the two Baffert horses, passes him like he was standing goddamn still in the stretch. I uh, To me, Messier just at that point, a San Anita Derby, that showed me that when he gets challenged by an actual real racehorse or someone named Slow Down Andy, he's going to get passed. Okay. I'll, I will. I hear your points. Uh, let me counter real quick. Of course. Chuck the Los Alamitos races. He doesn't like the track. Just throw them both out. It is a weird okay? track, yes. So throw them both out. And what did I just talk about earlier? When you run a certain numbers as a, a three-year-old and you see the four-year-old first start, well, guess what? Messier did that two to three. The most logical progression horse in this whole field is Messier, who is, by the way, coming out as the second highest buyer and one of the highest time forms in the field. That's the most logical horse to improve in the entire field. So if I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, look, if I'm the ownership group, I know Messier is making the derby. There's no way we're losing to Forbidden Kingdom. I'm not sending that horse. I'm not cranking that horse 100%. I don't need to win the San Diego Derby to get there. I care about winning the Kentucky Derby. And when we switch ownership groups, that became clear. We cared about winning the Kentucky Derby. I don't think Messier was fully cranked for the Sandy Derby. I think that's why Taba got by so easily. I think Taba was because you know what? The only person who wanted him in that race was the owner. That's very true. And so if the, it's just the owner, there's not this whole like, oh, mental planning of where this. No, there was no plan for Taba to go to the Kentucky Derby. They wanted to skip the Sandy Derby. 
And since they wanted to skip it, I think you had a fully cranked Taba versus an 80% cranked Messier. Messier felt like he had no chance. The ownership group felt like they had no chance of getting in here. I, I just I think Messier is the better horse. I think Messier right now, Taba may be better in five starts, but I think Messier is the better horse right now. I, I love the eight to one price. I think he's mm-hmm. wildly dangerous. Aaron brought this up. The San Diego Derby would win 11 of the last 18 Kentucky Derbies, right? So th- that race was massive. So for everyone who's like, well, there's only six horses, blah, blah, blah. But that race was so much better than anything that has been run so far from a prep perspective. Epicenter, zero of the last 18. Uh, t- uh, Zandon, one of the last 18 from a time form perspective. So the fact that that effort with a horse that can improve to me is just, I, I can't pass up eight to one. I, I, I agree that you're probably going to get between seven to one, eight to one on race day on both Taba and Messier. To me, Messier is the horse you got to go with. Great counter. I will say what is beautiful about Messier in this situation and has been for the last few months is that it's, he's polarizing just in terms of what you saw there because at one point, Mike, I was on that same side of the fence. I was like, well, look, it was his first race off the break. It, you know, Velasquez saw Tava go by. I was like, all right, well, I know I've got the second place. Um, what happened when he was on Medina Spirit in the Breeders' Cup Classic and Nick's go passes him? Velasquez looks around and goes, all right, boys, we're going for a second. Like, did he actually do that? I don't know. We think he did, but there's no there's no shame in getting second uh, in a race like that. But I don't I, – man, I just couldn't get over the fact that, that Tava went past him and the fact that Tava's in this race. But if you like Messier, 8-1. to one. Come on, why are we going to like uh, Messier is almost worth a play, even if I don't play him in, in this race uh, in the sequence. I might play him to win if he holds anywhere close to eight to one because, kind of like the uh, was a trademark earlier in the card that I was talking about when I got 30 to one, that's just too much value. Like, you have to play the money a little bit because the value is there, right? Yep, yeah, and that's, that's part of this. I mean, like, look, I, I, I like Mo Donegal as a horse, I like Epicenter as a horse, I like Zanin as a horse. Mo Donegal at the one post for me is a complete chalk, especially with what I think the pace is going to be. Epicenter, I don't think is as good as these horses. I think he's a very good horse, but I can't swallow seven to two. Zanin, I think, is a very talented horse. No horse in this field should be three to one. And so it, for me, that pushes me away from horses like that. Um, thank you, Chris. It's good discussion on Messier and, uh, yeah, lots of back and forth. We could literally just do a whole show about Messier with the, with the back and forth on that one. Um, I did use Epicenter. I've been, and Epicenter is my topic. It's been my topic for months. If you've watched any of these shows, I don't need to keep elaborating. He's got tactical speed. He has improving form. He himself has done nothing wrong. He's beaten everybody that you've thrown at him other than the time Joel Rosario kind of stopped riding real late in the LeCompte. Um, solid connections, solid breeding, whatever the track setup, uh, muddy, fast should be he should be able to handle it the problem really mike the biggest problem for me he's not named Taba, and that's the other horse that i use the other horse that you use that's the 12 horse 12 to 1 seems like it might be a, a, a pipe dream for us here we can talk about what odds we actually will get on him here but an absolute freak show potential can win by five lose by 30 mike smith seems extremely confident this feels very justify esque uh with the way that he's coming into this race he's caught mike smith so i'm using him because if table wins the kentucky derby i want to make sure that i cash in on this sequence yeah, Tave is my other horse I'm using. He's he's I'm I'm probably going to have Messier as a solo must use here because I will have some single tickets through Messier. But Tava would be the second horse that I would use, and is the only other horse I'm going to use in this pick five sequence. Uh, I think these are the two standouts in this field. I think the San Diego Derby was by far the best prep race. I think they have the running styles that can fit it. I don't think Tava needs to be as close as we saw him. I think he can come from off the pace. I think he has a ton of talent. Um, I, I just from my for my money, I'm going too deep here. I'm just going to play the six Messier and the 12 Taba. Uh, real quick, Jalen. Yeah, I, I hear the gates are narrower. Yes, Messier is a bigger horse. If he misses the break, he loses. Same with every other horse in this race. Yeah. Like, that's the problem. Like, right. with, the, with a race of 20 horses, if any of them miss the gate or break, they lose. I mean, I think game winner should have won the Derby or was the best horse in that Derby. He missed the break. And that was game over, right? So I, it's one of those situations where you're, there is risk in any type, any time you play in a horse with, or race with 20 horses. If any of them miss the break, there's no shot that he's going to be able to do it. Hang on now. He says that what, what makes him a standout is 15-length win against turf claiming horses. How dare you? Cabo Spirit is a turf stakes winner. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and, yes, Messier beat him like he was a turf stakes horse beaten by the freaking stretch. Um, well, and we had, also, sorry, when, you're, when you're looking at these races, you can't just look at who they beat. You also have to look at how they ran, how fast they ran, their numbers compared to everyone else in the field. And, and if you just take a raw numbers perspective, and I'm talking time form, I'm talking buyer, I'm talking brisnet. The best two horses in this field are, are Taba and Messier, period. Yep. 
So you can throw the field size at me and say that's a problem, and I, I understand that, and you're right. They haven't faced 20-horse fields. No one has. No one has. But they, they, they haven't faced a 20-horse field, and they haven't even faced a 10-horse field. I get that perspective. But literally every metric that you look at has those two horses as the most talented horses based off of the Santa Anita Derby, and I don't even think Messier is fully cranked for that. So that's, I mean, to me, at some point, you just got to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm standing my ground on these numbers that I respect and I've used for years. And when I see this type of, of overlay, I got to go to those overlays. I get the Zanin thing. I think Zanin is the most dangerous horse to my two. I think Zanin is going to sit closer to the play, pace with Flavian Pratt. So I, I totally understand the Zanin perspective. I can't swallow the three to one price. And I don't think he's going to float up to five or six to one, which is what I think he should be. Mm -hmm. And I would rather spread in other races where my opinion isn't as strong, like the Pat Day Mile, and somewhere where I believe that these are the two best horses. And, and obviously everyone's trip dependent here, but I think they both have a very good chance of working out a good trip. They're both quick out of the gate. And we've consistently seen California horses more forwardly placed than any other state, specifically when they're Bob Baffert horses. And I realize they're not Bob Baffert horses, but let's be honest, they're Bob Baffert they're horses. Bob Baffert. So uh, to me, you, you have a lot of different edges or reasons why I believe I can get a much better trip out of these two than other horses. Uh, Vicky brings up a great comment here. John White sold me on Taba and Messier this morning. If you haven't watched it yet, you probably haven't. It's, it's a little over two hours long, but I promise it's worth your time. The annual John White Kentucky Derby interview is up at racingdudes.com and youtube.com slash racing dudes. If you don't know, John White is this legendary handicapper better. He's been in the game longer than, than most people have ever been following it. And he knows more than we've ever get a chance to uh, forget. So, um, go listen to that. John White's got great information, and he explains why he wasn't a Taba Messier big supporter until recently. So make sure you go check that out. Great information. Mike, I think really it's down to three horses. I think it's Epicenter. I think it's Taba. I think it's Messier. If any horse outside of that wins, it would be a surprise. But on that note, let's maybe talk about a long shot that maybe doesn't win, but could definitely ruin your ticket for exotics tickets if you didn't use. You have a horse in mind? Yeah, I mean, of the horses that will actually go off over 10 to 1, because Taba will not, uh, of the horses that will actually go off over 10 to 1, I think there's two clear standouts. Look, White Barrio has been getting no love. It's floated up to 15 to 1, 16 to 1 in some offshore markets. Coming off a Florida Derby win where he went four wide around the first turn, didn't have a great position, went three wide around the second turn, was still able to run home and get the job done. Yes, Charge It was all over the place. I get it that Charge It was green. But White Abario did a lot of work in that race. Track has had him going 109 for six furlongs in that race, and he still was able to get home going a mile and an eighth. I like I like White Abario. I think he could take a logical step forward. He looked great working out in Florida. He looked very good over the track again today. So White Abario is another one that I think has tactical speed, but also has shown the ability to pass multiple horses. He came from fifth in the Florida Derby, four wide in the first turn. And so I think White Abario makes a ton of sense. And then I'm going to the five smile happy. He was 20 to one. Uh, look, you bet. I have slandered Kenny McPeak and Corey Landry on this show. And I said, I can't wait to bet against them if they're the favorite in the Derby. You know what? They're not the favorite in the Derby. They're 20 to one on the board. And that race, we like, go back to the trip. No pros video that we did or the trip. Note video that we did uh, on our, uh, on, on the YouTube page. It was specifically about smile happy and some great points were made. Look, the horse was three wide at Keeneland. The horse finished well. Zanin just finished better. But Zanin also wasn't close to the pace. Zanin also ran inside the whole time. Smile Happy was five wide on the first turn and four wide on the second turn. 20 to 1 is way too big. And if you're talking about a horse that could hunt the rail and kind of get the trip, if we get lucky and squeeze through there, I think Smile Happy is one that could go on the rail, then fly to the outside and pick up the pieces, maybe come up for third or fourth. So um, to me, Smile Happy and White of Barrio are the two longer shots that I think make a ton of sense running up into the try of the Super. You're an asshole. I said give me one. You gave me two, and your second was mine. I'm just kidding. Spot, I, all great points on Smile Happy. Thank you for mentioning the trip notes video with Justin. Um, uh, I will piggyback off of that, and, and I, something I mentioned in the video with Justin is that Corey Landry is riding Smile Happy. Corey Landry got second in 2017 riding looking at Lee, who was a dead closer. Um, he saved a ton of ground. He, I think he had drawn the rail that year, and a golden rail opened in the stretch, and he just came flying. I think a very. I don't think he goes as far back as looking at Lee, but I think you have a ground-saving inside trip because you're breaking from post five. I think Messier outbreaks him, and if you look at the other horses inside, uh, Summers tomorrow we have no idea what's going to happen. Mo Donegal and Happy Jack probably will be behind him, so a good ground-saving trip in the first third of the runners there. Uh, this horse could definitely come running. I did a deep dive, Mike, on his breeding because I've seen a lot of people say they don't think he can go in a mile and a quarter, and I get it. His sire, Run Happy, was a champion sprinter. But Run Happy, as a sire, 20% dirt route winners, 32 for 155. Run Happy's dam was 2 for 5 dirt routing. 
Run Happy Sire, Super Saver, uh, 16% Dirt Route Sire. Oh, by the way, he also won the Kentucky Derby, and he's the last horse to win the Derby and the Kentucky Jockey Club. Uh, Smile Happy won the Kentucky Jockey Club last year. His Dam Sire, Pleasant Tap, and the, the Dam side is where a lot of your stamina influence can come from. Dam Sire was Pleasant Tap. He won the Jockey Club Gold Cup. He won the Suburban. Those were both mile and a quarter. He was second to AP Indy in the Breeders' Cup Classic at a mile and a quarter. My point is, if don't discount Smile Happy because Run Happy is a sire because you think the distance is an issue. Pedigree says, top to bottom, this horse should definitely be able to handle Mount a quarter. It's just, is he good enough and does he get the trip? Yeah, I think you nailed it. I don't have any distance concerns with Mile Happy. One that, that I do have distance concerns that's being brought up in the chat is simplification. Um, I, I feel like if you go back and you watch those Florida efforts, uh, look, the, the, the Fountain of Youth where White Abario wins and, and Mo Donegal is absolutely charging down simplification simplification was not was spinning his wheels at that point and i think that was a mile and a 16th and we stretch out to a mile and a quarter in the florida derby and simplification was absolutely spinning his wheels there too so um to me i think that ex that uh, extra distance or i'm sorry it was a mile and eighth going a mile and a quarter so that extra furlong i think is really going to be a problem for simplification um yes he was faster early totally get that but i i feel like the mile and a quarter is just a little bit too far for him uh, listen, this has been uh, some great chat, and as, as Charles says, great discussion. Only be solved on Kentucky Derby Day. But uh, listen, if you want more thoughts on the Kentucky Derby, uh, for the purpose of the Magic Mike Show, we've got to cut it short. But we have profiles, in-depth profiles at RacingDudes.com and YouTube.com slash RacingDudes for all 20 horses in the gate. So go check that out. You'll get in-depth thoughts, coverage of the replays. What do we think these horses will be able to do? You can find all of that over there. But for right now, Mike and I, we agree. Tava is a horse you got to watch. And then if not Tava, either the three epicenter or the six Messier in the Kentucky Derby. This has been a presentation of RacingDudes.com, your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks, up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels, never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first.